I'm about to get this electron washed in the kitchen sink. It looks like someone's given this a D at some stage. I think I've just worked out why the uh, why the sink was good. Where'd my water go? What? I wish that hadn't happened. LK4. The connection that needs to be made is so short, I just thought, well, bugger it. Left-handed soldering, this may not end well. By the end of the previous video, I'd successfully completed the colour composite mod, along with accidentally restoring colour on the RF output without really trying. This just leaves a couple of repairs to complete, being the keyboard and the case. I'll get the easy part out of the way first. Given that only the 9, the O, the L and the full stop keys have failed, this suggests a break in the line upon which these keys are situated in relation to the keyboard matrix. The Electron Service Manual includes a diagram of the keyboard matrix, along with schematics for the whole machine. Whilst I can bumble my way through wiring diagrams, I'm a very visual guy, and I tend to follow the path of least resistance, no pun intended. As such, I decided to troubleshoot by looking at the keyboard PCB. There's an obvious blemish in the solder mask, which I thought may have been some sort of cut into the board, and therefore a cut into a trace. I took video where I followed this line of inquiry, but it didn't turn out so good. This led to the attachment of a bodge wire to one contact on the full stop key, with the other end going to where I thought the trace ended. This gave some quite unexpected results, which I'll describe in a moment. This is the trace that connects the 9 the O, the L, and the full stop, which was being a bit belligerent. And I figured, okay, I'll just follow the trail, or trace if you prefer, all the way down to here. That's where I soldered and that quite, didn't quite work. So as you can see, I tried putting a bodge wire in. Now, when I install this bodge wire here, where the trace leads to, I was getting O's instead of I's and L's instead of K's and you can kind of get the gist. So clearly that's not quite correct. So I moved on to the next pin. Same deal, only it was O's instead of U's, I think. So unfortunately I didn't actually record any of this because I thought, oh yes, it's all working hunky-dory. No, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Now I've since looked at this keyboard matrix and we can see here that uh, there are 14 lines from A0 to A13 and if we move this way we can see that 9, O, L and full stop are all on line A4. Of course A5 as line 8, I, K, comma a6, 7, U, J, M. You may have already joined the dots, but that line there appears to be A5, that one there appears to be A6, which means this one here appears to be A4 if we were to go using that logic. So of course we have 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. I was just looking on this side. Of course there's this whole other side of contacts, and that's of course part of the whole process of making letters. I'm thinking I've got two choices here. I can either reflow what I believe is the A4 line, or I can stick that bodge wire in there and see what happens. But of course that bodge wire, because the trace is still, as you can see here, the trace goes wee 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 all the way home and A4 goes kinda underneath and does the old reach around through here. So. I'm thinking bodge wire is probably not a fantastic option, or if I was to bodge, I'd probably have to bodge over there, but of course that's sharing it. So I'm going to try reflowing that one there, and let's see if that works. Get rid of the bodge wire first.
with that maybe surplus to requirements. If you look really closely at the board, you can see that a lot of it's a bit sort of, it's a bit crunchy, but again, 35 years old people. I don't know what that is in human years for a computer. I reckon that's probably about 300 human years at least. Okay, so let's see how we go. I'm going to screw this back together and see if it still works. So yeah, this is the part where I basically say that, look, I've studied this sort of stuff, but I don't remember a heck of a lot of it. And I didn't retain a heck of a lot of it either. So I may have repeated myself. I don't know. What I can say is whilst I have a bit of an understanding of how schematics work, I am a visual kind of guy. And I also like to have stuff explained to me like I'm perhaps a little bit, uh, well, I guess challenged would be a nice way of putting it. So I thought that I'd try and be clever and look at the traces and actually see how things are laid out. What ended up being a better solution may have been the trial and error by actually sticking the wire where it doesn't belong and um, getting that sort of immediate feedback. Granted, it's not always advisable to do this, but if you're only dealing with like five volts or something like that, it's usually not going to be the end of the world. And I think what I'm trying to say here is that you don't need to be uh, any sort of electronic engineering ninja to do this sort of stuff. I mean, it helps clearly, but this is one of these sorts of hobbies where I think that, you know, if you're a late, if you just like the technology and you like mucking around with stuff and you like playing the game from back in the day or you want to try and I guess fill that midlife crisis size hole with something that's a bit less expensive than uh, a sports car then this is what it's all about. Just to make sure that the elk wouldn't magically unfix itself, I waited about a week before undertaking final playtesting. As per British microcomputer design orthodoxy of the era, sound is provided by a speaker built into the computer rather than by audio output into a monitor. There's probably a mod I could make to feed the electron sound out to a television or a monitor via AV, but I want to keep this machine as original as possible. As such, please enjoy this montage of playtesting with some chill beats in the background. I originally bought this Electron because I was looking for a cheap entry into the Bieber Sphere. What I didn't expect was just how good the Elk is in its own right. It wasn't the most technically impressive micro of its day, and it certainly wasn't the cheapest. However, the Elk oozed enough quality to offer a convincing bead light experience, quality which is still obvious over 35 years later. Today, enthusiasts all around the world are still pushing the Electron to its limits in both software and hardware. If you're an Aussie vintage computer collector and you'd like to add an elk to your collection, this part of the video may be of interest. Bear in mind that I'm not an expert and that pricing is based on actual sales results on ebay.co.uk as of around August 2020. For simplicity's sake, the exchange rate used in this video is based on the old rule of thumb, where one pound sterling equals about two dollar e dues. I've had to re-record this bit due to recent events, so the audio might sound a bit different to the rest of the video. Whilst the Electron was definitely sold in Australia, you could be waiting a while for an Aussie Elk to turn up on eBay. That said, as I was putting the finishing touches on this video, three Electrons turned up on eBay all at once, and all three sold within 48 hours. This is a bit of a freak event, so you need to either be very patient and wait for the next local Elk to appear, or you'll need to look further afield in places such as New Zealand or the UK, the latter offering a particularly strong flow of Electrons. Because there are so many electrons changing hands on eBay UK, resist the temptation to buy the first one that you see. I'd advise that you spend some time observing the current market before making any serious bids. 
One thing you'll notice is that many sellers won't post to Australia, but there are plenty that will. As at August 2020, an Aussie collector can expect to pay around $200 all in for an elk in good working condition, with around half this figure representing shipping and GST. With this kind of money, expect an elk that may include a power supply, but not much else. Cheaper non-working or untested units may be available, but shipping a dead elk costs the same as shipping a live one. As such, buying a non-runner doesn't make a great deal of financial sense in my opinion. Increasing your budget to around $300 or even a little bit more opens up a range of tantalising options. You could buy that bare bones Electron mentioned earlier, and then deck it out with an Elk SD64 expansion unit for around $100, giving your Electron SD card storage and an extra 32k of RAM. An attractive option for the retro gamer that's all about gaming on hardware, rather than on emulators. A great starting point for a serious collector, Immaculate Electrons and original boxes and polys appear on eBay UK from time to time. Whilst most of these tend to be restricted to British buyers only, the occasional seller may show willingness to send their minty fresh elk down under. For those who want the period correct electron experience, find one with a stack of period correct accessories, books and software, much like fellow Aussie based YouTuber Chris, aka 005 Agima. Not only is he responsible for the spiffy cover photo on my channel, he's on a mission to buy back all the computers and consoles from his childhood. There's a link to his channel below, he's definitely worth checking out. Whilst owning an elk will put you in a very small and exclusive club down under, you'll never feel alone or unsupported. Many internal components, along with quality replacement power supplies and cables, are available from most good local electronic suppliers. Elk specific parts are readily available from the UK and are not outrageously expensive either. Technical documentation is easy to find and there is a plethora of useful information and software online. The Stardot forums warrant special mention. It's a very active and friendly community. I can't recommend Stardot highly enough. Whilst the Electron is nowhere nearly as flexible as the BBC Micro, it's definitely not as compromised as you might think. Whilst Beebs in Australia are starting to creep up in price as supplies dry up and nostalgia for school days set in, the Electron may no longer be the poor man's BBC Micro. In fact, it might just be the thinking man's BBC Micro as well. Until next time, see you later.